They're finally here. The long-awaited revisions to Chapter 797 were published on June 1st. Today we want to go through how these changes are going to impact cleaning and disinfecting in the compounding pharmacy. One of the main changes is now there are required annual competency testing. Contact can assist you, come out to your location, train your staff, and provide competency documents for all of that training. In addition, we have a library of training videos and online resources. You can reach out to your contact representative for more information about that. The donning sequences are gonna change as far as garbing. The old 797 had a prescribed and dictated donning process. The new chapter states that your donning process will be based on the placement of your sink and it must be documented in your SOP. Based on industry experts, Contact will recommend specific donning sequences based on the placement of that sink. You can reach out to your Contact rep for copies of those practices. There's nothing changing with the reuse of frocks. The old chapter did allow us to reuse our frocks only for the same shift as long as they are maintained in a classified area or an SEA. All of your other PPE, hairnet, your gloves, booties, those all have to be disposed of every single time. So not a lot of changes in the garbing sequence. Um, the original chapter did not specifically address sinks. The new, the new revised 797 does mandate that you need to clean and disinfect your sink daily, and then you'll apply a sporicidal to that at least monthly. Um, there are some changes in how we're gonna take care of our primary engineering control. Um, the original chapter requi required us to clean and disinfect that at the beginning of each shift, and that's gonna be using one of your EPA registered sort of germicidal disinfectants. Um, you're now gonna be required to do that once daily. So that initial cleaning step that was done at the beginning of each shift will now only be required to be done daily or when contamination is known to be present. There's also a change we used to have to stop in between individual CSPs, no longer than 30 minutes of continuously compounding to stop and disinfect the entire PEC. The revised chapter is only gonna require you to clean the deck or disinfect that horizontal surface. The frequency is gonna change a little bit. We don't need to do it in between individual CSPs any longer. The new chapter states, you need to apply sterile 70% alcohol to the horizontal work surface at least every 30 minutes if the compounding process takes 30 minutes or less. If the compounding process takes more than 30 minutes, compounding must not be disrupted, and then you'll clean and disinfect the work surface of that PC after you finish compounding. So there's a chart. If you look at table eight in the chapter, revised chapter, you will see these laid out, that you're, the frequencies of cleaning the PEC. You're also gonna see a new column for applying a sporicidal please note that now you're gonna to have to clean everything at least monthly with a sporicidal. That's your primary engineering control, your secondary engineering control, storage bin shelves. If it's in that clean room or SCA, you're going to need to apply a sporicidal at least monthly. The original 797 did not specifically address cleaning and disinfecting of mop handles and cleaning tools. The revised chapter will require you to clean and disinfect any cleaning tools before and after every use. The original chapter did not list a specific procedure for cleaning and disinfecting a primary engineering control. The revised chapter gives specific procedures for applying disinfectants and sporicidal agents in the PEC. If you refer to boxes 7.1 and 7.2 in the revised chapter, you'll notice that the first bullet point in each box talks about an initial pre-cleaning step using sterile water for irrigation or sterile water for injection and low lint wipers. But you'll also notice a caveat on down in those bullet points or even in chapter seven that says if you're using a one-step EPA registered disinfectant or sporicidal agent, you can skip that, skip that initial cleaning step with sterile water for irrigation. The original chapter suggested but did not require the use of suitable disinfectants on items being taken into the clean room. The revised 797 requires that any item being taken into the clean room be wiped down with either a sporicidal agent 
an EPA registered disinfectant or 70% sterile alcohol. Contact will recommend the use of a sporicidal disinfectant to wipe down all items. This is considered a best practice due to the high risk of spore contamination from corrugated cardboard and other packaging materials. The original chapter 797 did not address critical site wiping specifically with its own section. The revised chapter calls attention to the importance of critical site wiping by creating a new section, 8.3 and it states that critical sites such as stoppers, ampule necks, and intravenous bag septums must be wiped with 70% IPA while in the PC, and this provides both chemical and mechanical actions to remove contaminants. You must allow the 70% IPA to dry before puncturing stoppers or breaking the necks of ampules. If you would like more information or a detailed guide of these changes to the revised 797, please visit contacthealthcare.com or contact your local contact representative.